everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. So I hope you're doing really well and thank you very much for joining me today. Today I am here to share with you an amalgamation of things really. I have some makes to share with you, I have some work in progresses, I want to talk to you about what I got up to during the month of March and the sewing shows that I went to and also just to share with you some sewing plans moving forwards. So I thought I would share with you my makes first of all whilst I'm stood here in the bedroom um, and it, as it's easier for me to sort of show you my makes this way and then I'm going to take the video downstairs and then I will share with you um, some other makes and also my work in progresses and the then share with you what I got from the uh, sewing shows that I went to. So my first thing that I'd like to share with you today then is what I am wearing and this is the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress and I'll put a stock photo in here as to what it looks like. It does come as a dress format and also a top and I really like um, this style. I've seen some really beautiful versions on Instagram and it kind of inspired me to have a go at making um, a version of my own. So I have made the dress version and I've used this beautiful viscose fabric that I got from the first Think Pink subscription box which is from Andrea at Beyond the Pink Door. I was kindly gifted the first four boxes um, when she first started them as a thank you for naming the boxes. Um, I unfortunately haven't subscribed myself just because it's just out of my uh, sort of uh, budget really. Um, but it is something I would like to do once I potentially have a job in the future to afford uh, that but yeah I use the fabric um, from that box for this make so I had kept the fabric for quite a while before using it as I didn't really know what I was going to make with it it's not a fabric that I necessarily would have picked out for myself because it is quite a busy fabric and viscose isn't my favorite fabric to work with either but this particular viscose really did surprise me it's um quite a heavyweight style of viscose and it actually was really nice to sew with and it behaved you know with no problems at all I didn't have to spray starch the fabric or anything so I'm really pleased with that and with this being quite a involved make I would say um I was a little bit dubious as to how I was going to go with the shearing with this but it worked absolutely perfectly now this isn't my first um sort of attempt at doing any shearing I did do some shearing on a dress which was a ready-to-wear dress that I altered in the sew up cycle challenge which took place last year and I sheared the uh, dress itself to cinch in at the waist a little bit, which I did find quite difficult because I was only working with a very small amount of fabric with it being a ready to wear dress already made up. But obviously with this particular pattern, you um, cut out the size that you need and then you shear the bodice pieces separately. And I really enjoyed the process of that actually. Now I've made a straight size three um, in this dress and I just sort of made the dress length as to what I felt it should be, um, which is just below my knees. And I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. And I feel like I've made the right choice with the type of fabric uh, for this dress as well. I think it goes really, really well together. So I'm really pleased that I chose this fabric for this dress. Um, it's really comfortable, this dress actually. And like I say, I've made a size three, but there is some alterations that I would change for next time. Only slight ones, but I just feel that it's a little bit, feels a little bit loose on my top half. Um, you actually have uh, elastic inserted into the sleeve head here and across the front section of the bodice and also along the back bodice section here. And I just feel that they feel a little bit loose and I just went with the elastic lengths that they told you to in the actual pattern instructions. And I think next time I would just do for each of those two centimetres shorter, just because I am a little bit smaller up here. So it does feel a little bit loose and it does tend to slip off my shoulders a little bit and show my bra straps um, because this is a really bra strap friendly type of dress. It covers them up, but you do need to have that elastic, you know, quite tight. And I do feel like I can pinch that in and that feels a little bit snug on me um, so next time I yeah just two centimeters on either side of there and also across here as well it feels a little bit loose you have got these ties here um, but they are just uh, for show so you add them on afterwards and I know that Anna from you got me in stitch she has done a video on her Mabel's that she's made and she's actually incorporated the tie actually into the um, sort of section that you sew here so that she could pull them tighter and I think that is actually a really a good idea if you would want to do that instead of having the elastic there or you could potentially add um, the ties onto the ends of the elastic and perhaps pull it that way maybe that's that's an idea and um, yeah it just feels a little bit loose it's okay like when I'm stood here as I'm speaking to you now but if I was to bend over I, I do sort of flash a little bit especially when you move your hands forwards like that 
but yeah it's a really beautiful pattern and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out I've got uh, the shearing here um I think there's about five rows one two three four four yeah five rows of shearing there so that cinches you in really nicely at the waist um and then the length I've actually done my dress is just below knee length um and I really like that length for this particular dress you could have it a little bit shorter for knee length I think that would look nice as well um, but because I wore this to a wedding I decided to have it just slightly longer I've got it on with trainers today so obviously you can dress it down with trainers um but yeah, I wore this to my cousin's wedding a couple of weeks ago and I just felt really, really nice in this. I was thinking initially that I was going to be wearing that dress in the background there, which was my dress from the dressmaker's ball. Um, but as I'd made a jacket um, to go with what I was going to wear, I felt that the dress wasn't going to pair with that just purely because of the size of the skirt. Um, so I ended up wearing the jacket with this dress and I felt that it really complemented each other. Um, so this was kind of my fallback dress and I'm really glad that I did that because actually the wedding itself, um, it was quite an intimate ceremony where there wasn't that many people and they didn't have any extra guests for the evening. So I think I would have felt a little bit overdressed in that if I'm honest. So I'm really glad that I went with this option. So the dress um, overall is a beautiful sew. I would say it is quite an involved make because there are quite a number of stages, but if you just take it step by step, then you would be absolutely fine. I do think it is for an intermediate sewer rather than a beginner, um, especially if you've not done any shearing before. And um, yeah, it's got shearing on the sleeves as well. I think you can do this as long sleeves or short sleeves, and I've chose to do the short sleeve version. I really like how that sits. And with this fabric being a viscose, it does have that drape to it as well. So it kind of just falls off your shoulders really nicely uh, because I do think if you had a more structured fabric maybe like a cotton poplin it will hold that shape up there a little bit more which I think will be absolutely fine I suppose it's just your preference but yeah this does feel just slightly loose so I will make that change next time. Tilly's instructions are really really good um, as always so she holds your hand throughout the whole process of making this dress up it is a nice sew like I say but just take your time and do it in, in stages if you feel that it's too much to do all in one day um, but Michelle from Sewing Bunny has done a sew along on this dress um, on her YouTube channel which I will link down below and I did actually use that just um, because there are a couple of areas where um, it is a little bit tricky and I just wanted to see how Michelle had done that and it, that certainly helped me especially with attaching the sleeves to the bodice um, and the way that you sew that together and there are some uh, sort of points in the instruction process where it doesn't tell you when to finish your seams um, so I think a lot of Tilly's patterns are designed at people doing it just on their regular sewing machine. Um, and I like to finish all of my seams using my overlocker. And I just feel that there are some steps missing in her instructions if you are using an overlocker. So it would be nice to have that as an extra little bit in there, um, especially if you're not an experienced sewer and you don't know when to finish your seams. It would be nice to say now to do that kind of thing. So yeah, I, I definitely you know finished some of the seams prior to sewing. Um, so that they were already finished when I sewed them up or I was able to finish the seams as I thought it would be right at that time, if that makes sense. But yeah, overall, I'm really, really pleased with this dress and it certainly won't be my last one. Um, I'm going to make um, another one in the fabric that I showed last time, which was like a sort of orangey coloured one, uh, which I got from Rainbow Fabrics. It is quite lightweight, so I think that would be perfect for summer and I think that'd be really nice to wear. So that is one that I am considering doing and I am also thinking about making the top version as well. So I will now get changed into my other make that I wore on the day, which is the jacket, which is the long line jacket from So Different Patterns. So I'll be back in just a second. Right, so here is my long line jacket by So Different Patterns and I've used this gorgeous boiled wool that I got from Guthrie and Garney in Birmingham a number of years ago at So Brum and it took me a long, long time to cut into this fabric because it was not cheap and I was just very scared to cut into it and I initially did have different plans for it but I decided to go with this particular pattern because I've made it before and I knew that I really liked the style of the jacket and thought it would pair well as sort of a wedding outfit as well. So the So Different long line jacket is is actually an open jacket so it doesn't have any zips or closures or anything like that and you do just wear it open I think potentially if you did want to close it then you would just need to extend the front bodice pieces and the bottom pieces just so they would overlap so that is something that you could do or you could actually add some hook and eyes into it there um, and that would sufficiently close it as well so um, I just decided to leave it as is and have it open now there is one thing that I wish I'd have done with this jacket actually in hindsight and that is I wish I would have lengthened it 
it because the length that I've got my dress at um, that I wore to the wedding it is longer than the actual jacket itself and I feel that that difference is a little bit too much um, I think if I'd have made the dress maybe knee length it wouldn't have been such a big drastic difference but um, I wanted to have that dress a little bit longer, so I just had to go with it. And, you know, I was sewing this kind of right up to the time when we were going to the wedding. So unfortunately, there wasn't any more time to decide to make another dress to go with it. Um, and so I just went with it. And I felt absolutely fine in it, but it is one thing that I would definitely do in the future is to lengthen the jacket to sort of match the length of the dress that I was wearing. Um, I, I'm not going to be too bothered about it overall because I only wore it for a small amount of time at the wedding itself and moving forwards I'm going to be wearing it with a number of different garments because it's a plain colourway. I do think I can get away with wearing it you know even with jeans and a top and dress it down that way and dress it up with other things um yeah so I'm absolutely fine with it but in the future if I was to make this again specifically to go with the dress then I would make sure that the hems matched <laughs> but yeah overall I still felt really really nice in it and I had a fascinator uh which complemented the color of my um dress and I had a sort of corsage that I bought from the charity shop and that went really well sort of with the pink in my dress and I had some navy blue shoes on that went with the navy in my dress as well so I did feel really sort of colour coordinated and put together um, and I had these earrings on as well which I made um, and I got the beads from Hobbycraft and they go really well and yeah so I'm just really really pleased actually so this is a really lovely jacket to sew and I would definitely say it is suitable for beginners because it's, the majority of it is actually just sewing straight lines it's raglan sleeves so there's no setting in of any sleeves um, it's got a really deep facing on the inside which I actually have hand sewn down into place because it secures the pockets into place um, um, so let me just pan you down it's got this lovely round collar as well and then you've got the waist seam here which sits just at the same height as the um, shearing as well so I feel that goes really well so as you can see you could get some hook and eyes and kind of close it like that but I just felt that I wanted it open it's got really deep pockets um, in there and I like I say I have hand sewn all the way down the facing to secure the pockets into place so they weren't flapping around it is an unlined jacket and I have just used navy blue overlocking um, stitching and I think um, that sort of blends in fairly well because there is a blue t uh, sort of tinge to this uh, teal coloured boiled wool. Um, as you can see, yeah, so it's raglan there. And then I'll just pan you down a little bit more so you can see the length of the jacket in comparison to the skirt. So there is quite a big difference and that sort of, yeah, was a bit of a shame really. I think, like I say, if I pull this up and had it more sort of knee length, it wouldn't look as much of a difference. I don't even know if that's changed anything, but yeah, in hindsight, I would have lengthened that so it would have been the same, the same length really. But as you can see, it's got really beautiful deep pockets in there. And I do think this is going to get a lot of wear. And I think even though the jacket itself, it doesn't close, I think you could put a really nice scarf around it to keep you warm in the cooler months. Um, but yeah, and this is the second time of me making this pattern and I made it before using a jacquard fabric and actually that worked really well and that actually feels a lot softer as it's a bit more of a lightweight material um, and it just molds my body a little bit more this feels a little bit more structured um, I think on my other one I took the side seams in uh, to sort of bring it in a little bit more because I had quite a bit of excess fabric at the back and um, with this one I haven't done that because it is more structured so I felt I needed that little bit more room in it um, but it's yeah it's dead comfortable and I'm really pleased with it and really glad that I finally got this fabric sewn up um, and it will get a lot of wear with it being plain as well because it should complement a lot of other garments in my wardrobe. So I'll insert a photo of what I look like on the day of the wedding um, and I also borrowed my friend's um, little bag and <laughs> that was in like a light pink colourway as well so yeah I really did feel nicely colour coordinated and as I like I say when on the day I felt that I was wearing the right style of outfit because if I'd been wearing my dressmaker's ball dress I do think I would have been slightly overdressed um, and I do think that perhaps this jacket won't fit over it and if I'm going to be honest I haven't tried them on together so you know I perhaps will try it on in the future but I don't think that with this being an open style jacket, I don't think it will fit over the big skirt because um, I feel like it would then look like it's too small. And it is again, shorter than the actual skirt of that dress as well. So yeah, um, but that is my long line jacket. I hope you like it. So before I go and take you downstairs then to talk about everything else, I also made a tie um, and I made this using some of the excess fabric from my dress, as you can see, as at the time, um, my husband had only bought himself a suit and um, 
he didn't have a tie. He'd bought himself a shirt as well. Uh, but yeah, that was all he'd really got. He'd got his shoes, which he wears, which he got married to me in. <laughs> um, and he'd got some socks and stuff. But no, he hadn't got a tie. So I thought, you know, I'd go ahead and make a tie. And that was actually off the suggestion of my friend Jackie from my sewing group. She said, why don't you use the excess fabric to make one? I was like, what a good idea. So I went on to Google and basically searched for a free tie pattern, found one and then downloaded it from my phone and printed it. Um, what I will say though is although this has turned out really really well and I'm really pleased with it, um, it did come up a little bit short and that was because when I printed the actual pattern out itself, the uh, square that you usually measure, um, it wasn't quite measuring accurately and I think it's because I printed it from my phone rather than from the computer so I couldn't change the settings um, so I think that is why the tie came out a little bit short I think it was about three inches too short in comparison to one of Simon's regular ties um, he did do me the honour of trying this on but I did think mm, I don't think he's going to like it I don't think he's going to be keen on the fabric itself um, and I don't think he's going to want to match with me either because he's really fussy about that kind of thing uh, which is a shame because in actual fact I think the tie looked really nice with his suit and I did have enough fabric to make another one you know like if he was going to have worn it I would have made another one so it was the right length because it did like I say it was a bit too short when he put it on um, but I did take a photo of him with the tie on with his uh, suit jacket and I think it does complement it really well with his pink shirt and everything but unfortunately he didn't wear it but um thomas did bless him so my boys were all wearing the same and i don't usually dress my boys the same but they all had uh, their navy polo shirts on with different colored shorts and then they just had their gray socks on from school and their school shoes um but thomas said he would wear it and bless him he did he wore this for the majority of the day and i'll insert a photo of him wearing it because i think he looks dead cute it is completely oversized for him but you know i just think it's one of those really nice things that he did and it made me feel really nice and the fact that he was matching with me and he definitely kept on for the majority of the day because there was food stains on this and I've had to wash it since we got back um, from the wedding but yeah it was really nice to have a go at making the tie as well it was dead simple to do and I would definitely go ahead and make one in the future if Simon needed a tie and he chose a fabric or something you know uh, yeah I, I just really enjoyed it I mean it was um a quick make I did it in half an hour and the only bit that took me the longest was hand sewing so the, it took me half an hour to sew it up on my sewing machine and then the hand stitching I did at a separate time so in all it probably took me an hour maximum um but yeah dead dead simple I will try and find the tutorial that I used just and I'll link it in the description box below for you just in case you want to have a go yourself but I highly recommend <laughs> if you can get your husband to wear matchy matchy with you then you know Go ahead and do it it's a really fun make and uh, very satisfying right so i'll take you downstairs then and i'll share the rest of what i want to share with you so i will see you in a moment right I'm downstairs now i've got changed um and it's really gloriously sunny outside however the sun is going in and out in and out shake it all about <laughs> And uh, basically the corrugated roof is going to start clicking and I really do apologise for that really annoying noise. Um, it's just that this is the best room for me to film in to share with you basically. So I hope that you can forgive me for that. Um, so yeah, I do apologise about that. So getting on to the makes that I have uh, got to share with you here. Um, this was the uh, So Frugal make that I made for So Frugal. And this is the Boxwood Hoodie by moodfabrics.com. And um, obviously this is a free pattern on their website and I thoroughly enjoyed making this and I have been wearing it loads because we are having the coldest weather still at the moment. Um, and this has just been getting so much wear. It's like a stretch fleece kind of material, um, a bit of like a boiled wool kind of texture, I suppose. And uh, it's in this gorgeous light, pink colorway. This was kindly gifted to me by a friend. Um, so this was certainly a very frugal make. Um, and then I used the um, French terry fabric that I had from my stash, like a little remnant piece um, for the hood lining. Now the hood um, doesn't come as lined in the pattern itself. So I decided to add that feature. And then what enabled me to do that was I actually folded back um, a segment on the actual pattern piece itself for the hood to enable the fabric to roll around and create that kind of hem there. And I really like how that has worked out. It has certainly made um, it nice and squishy, having that extra lining there. And I think it just complements the pink with it being gray. Um, 
I did have, when I showed this on a video for my So Frugal Reveal, I did have like a, um, a flamingo kind of patch on there, which I haven't added. I am just going to make that into a pin, which I haven't done so as yet. Um, but yeah, I have just been wearing it um, plain actually. So I really like that. And then I just added this little label at the bottom, which says going sewing there. Um, and did I add another label in it? Oh yeah, just one in the back neck. Uh, that just says handmade there um yes yeah, so that has been getting loads of wear so i highly recommend the boxwood hoodie pattern um it does come up very very short so i have added length and i have also added a hem band onto the bottom and that sits just right on me now um i can't remember how much um length i added exactly i may have stated that in the video that i shared for the reveals so i will link that in the description box below for you um, if you did want to go and check that out so the other make that i have been doing is this gorgeous memory bear um, and as you may well know i made a memory bear previously from a pattern that i picked up from a charity shop uh, which ended up being really big um, because i made the largest size out of the pattern and didn't realize at that time um, so i wanted to try a different pattern and this is simplicity a2115 I believe I'll put it across the bottom of the screen just to make sure that I've got that right um, this pattern is actually available on Etsy and that is where um, I got it from and I really have enjoyed making this memory bear up this actually sits at 18 inches um, and I am really really pleased with how she has turned out so I'm in the process of naming her because I am going to be raffling her off because I don't think my husband will appreciate having another bear <laughs> in the bedroom um as much as i don't really want to give her away um but no i think what i'm going to do is raffle her off um and put the proceeds to charity so i think i might do that on my instagram or maybe my facebook page um yeah let me know if you're interested in in you know buying a raffle ticket number kind of thing um because what i thought i'd do is give everybody a number who wanted to buy a a ticket per se um, and then draw um, the number from like a random number generator kind of thing and then that would be the winning person um, but yeah I just um, really am pleased with how she has turned out it's lovely size really really lovely so um, I interfaced again all of the pieces because I've used the um, as you can recognize here the pink fabric from my boxwood hoodie and also some cotton jersey fabric, which I've used to make a um, Tilly in the Buttons Agnes top, which I do have to share with you, but I haven't quite finished hemming it yet. Um, and I really like how those uh, fabrics complement each other. I haven't actually managed to um, line up the stripes, unfortunately. So I just kind of tried to line up um, the stripes so they were kind of going along, you know, but it isn't the best. So that I do need more practice on that side of things. Um, but overall, I'm really pleased with how she has turned out and I think she looks really, really good. And she, yeah, she's a really nice size. And I've just used, again, the safety eyes and nose um, and I'm really pleased with how they have gone in as well. So I have decided that this is actually going to be the pattern that I am going to use to make the memory bears uh, for my mum and dad using my brother's t-shirts. Um, I had two t-shirts of his to use and that is the only um, garments that we've got left of his um, oh and also i did have this um kind of high vis vest jacket kind of thing that i think he wore when he went raving um and yeah i have bitten the bullet and actually cut into one of the t-shirts so i've started cutting into this orange t-shirt first um as you can see i've cut down the side seams as uh, at the moment um and i wanted to incorporate a little bit of the detailing on the bear itself like you've got this logo here so i don't know if i'm going to be able to use that logo at the moment but i have used the logos that were down the sides on this so i'll show you how far i've got with that um i do have this other t-shirt as well um which initially i didn't think i was going to use the two colorways together but um a lady pointed out that actually these colors do complement each other because they are opposite sides of the color wheel so I perhaps will do two bears. I think this is what my plan is, to do two memory bears. So my mum and dad have both each got one each and it will incorporate both of the t-shirts. Um, this one's got these funky, like psychedelic spongy spot bits on it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to incorporate that. I will give it a go. I might actually end up cutting around those and perhaps even fabric gluing them on afterwards I don't know I'm just gonna have to see how it goes um, and then this particular pattern that I'm using does come with a little jacket vest pattern and also some little trousers as well so I thought I could definitely utilize this to make the little jacket um, 
And then I don't know what I'll do about whether I do any shorts or trousers for it. I'm not really sure. I might just put the jacket on uh, because I don't really want to add other fabric that isn't related to my brother Craig, really. So yeah, I'm enjoying the process of that. So where I've got with it so far is this is going to be the back section. And like I said, I've interfaced the pieces. Now this interfacing actually came from Andrea at Beyond the Pink Door. I think it was in... Um, I think it was in one of the advents, or I could be wrong, it could be the, one of the think, big, think Pink boxes that I was gifted. However, it's a woven interface and it's really, really good. Um, you know, as you can see, it stops the um, jersey fabric being stretchy. So when you stuff it, it doesn't like expand the actual bear into a bigger size than it, it should be. So yeah, it's like that at the moment. So this is gonna be the back. So I've got a hole in the back at the moment because that's where you leave it open to stuff the bear from the back and then you um, sew that, that hem or seam line rather closed with some hand stitches. So I've used the sides of the t-shirt. Obviously the sides of the t-shirt did have seams down the side so I've had to incorporate those a little bit here, as you can see. But I have managed to get this like kind of logo thing that was on it. So this will be his bum area there. Um, and that where you've got the darts there, that, that enables the bear to sit up um, when he's got the legs on and stuff like that. So I've, I'm glad that I've been, managed to incorporate that in. Um, and then it does have a very slight seam line down here as well, which will be, it will just, it's just what it is, you know, um, I think it will look fine once that's kind of sewn up um, and it will look fine because it kind of is, it mirrors each side. Um, so I'm really pleased with how that is going so far. So I'm just taking it step by step um, and I'm gonna take my time with it because like I say, I want to do two bears. I do need to order some more of that interfacing. Now, Andrea, I contacted her and asked her if she was gonna have any more in stock and she does stock it. I think she was just waiting to get it listed up on her new website. So if that is on there now, I will link it down below in case you want to use it for any of your dressmaking, really, because it is a really brilliant um, interface and it's not too stiff either. Um, it's actually really lightweight, you know, you can um, crunch it up kind of thing, but yeah. So I'm really pleased with how that's going and I absolutely love how this bear has turned out. And I've had some name suggestions already <laughs> of friends and family and I'm gonna put them in a hat and draw them out to um, find out what the what I'm gonna call her. Um, and then, yeah, I'm gonna raffle her off. So let me know if you are interested in that because I will figure out a way that how I can include everybody on Instagram, YouTube, and um, on my Facebook as well. Um, so I'm not gonna rush to do that. Um, so I'll let you know sort of as and when I do that so if you are interested yeah please just comment in the comment section below but yeah really pleased with her so march was a very busy month for me which i feel like i wasn't really on um on youtube very much really other than just taking part in the so frugal challenge really so i really enjoyed that um, but i went to two shows during march i was very fortunate to be able to go to the sewing for pleasure show in birmingham which isn't too far away from where i live and then i was able to go to the stitch festival in london um alongside all of the other vloggers who uh went there as well on the Saturday. And I thoroughly enjoyed both shows. Both are very different and both I have been to before. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go to the Sewing for Pleasure show on the Saturday this time to help out with um, Freya and Sarah on the catwalk for the Dressmakers Ball and for their patterns as well. They did ask me, but unfortunately, because I'd already got um, a chance to go on the Friday. I couldn't then go on the Saturday as well because it's you know it's just not very fair to leave Simon with the with the boys. But I was able to go with my lovely friend Jackie from my sewing group. We went together on the Friday. She drove us there, and I was back in time to pick the boys up from school, so that worked out really well. So luckily the traffic was on our side, and I got back in good time. But I did have my mum and dad on standby just in case of any situations. But yeah, all was good. So I didn't really go with a plan of what I wanted to purchase from any of these shows. Um, but I actually bought more at the Sewing for Pleasure show in Birmingham than I did at the Stitch Festival. And that is purely because at the Stitch Festival, I think I was just chatting the whole day near enough. Um, it was more of a social event than it was anything else. And I only really skimmed the surface, but that was absolutely fine. I thoroughly enjoyed both of the shows. So whilst I was at the Sewing for Pleasure show in Birmingham, um, I went over and I met the lovely Becky from Becky's Sewing Studio. Now I came across her um, company 
sort of back end of last year when a few other vloggers had got her advent calendar and I thought her advent calendar was really lovely and I am considering getting that again, you know, well for this year, not again, for this year. Um, and I wanted to go over to her stand specifically and she got some lovely bits there. So I'll share with you what I picked up. So I have actually picked up a, just a, a badge um, that says Happy Stitcher on it. I like putting these badges on my um, denim jacket. I picked up some sewing labels from her as well. And then, so one, I think they both say handmade on them and one's in a white colorway there. And then there's a pink one in the background. I love her packaging as well. I think that's really lovely. Now I'm not really a leopard print fan, but I love the fact that it's colored leopard print. I think that looks really, really nice. Um, and then I bought another pin badge as well um, in the form of a wooden sewing machine. I really like that. Again, so that'll be going on a jacket. I then bought um, some labels. And these are to go on um, like my sewing machine cover, so like sticky labels. And I've got this one that says love to sew and it's got all of those details on it there. And then this one in the form of a sewing machine in that gorgeous colored leopard print, really love that. So that's gonna go on my boring white um, <laughs> sewing machine cover. And then I picked up these beautiful buttons from her in this lovely orangey kind of pastel color. Um, now, some of you will know that I've got a button phobia that I've had all my life, and it is the, one of the most bizarrest of uh, phobias to have. I'm, I'm guessing phobias are just bizarre in themselves, aren't they, really? There's so many weird ones out there, um, and mine, yeah, it's definitely a very weird one, and one that has hindered my life, basically. Um, at school, when I had to wear school uniform, uh, I think my mum used to like do them up and, and then I used to like put it on over my head. Um, I never used to like wearing certain things with buttons on. So my nan used to knit me cardigans with special <laughs> special buttons on, um, shank ones with pictures on, I think it was. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's always been a hindrance. Even when I used to work part-time in a bar in town, I used to have to wear on a, on the Sunday shift, I used to have to wear a shirt and a tie. Oh my worst, it was it was just the worst com uh, combination for me to do. And now obviously I um, I help out at the Cubs. It's on the uniform for there as well, which uh, it, during the winter it's fine, I'm wearing a hoodie, that's fine. But in the summer it's a polo shirt and, and then a shirt for official duties and stuff like that. And I've had to have my mum change into ones that are okay. Now I cannot explain why certain ones are okay and others are not i i just i don't know why this it's just something about them that makes me think oh i can't touch those or if i touch them i have to wash my hands it's just the most bizarrest of things these are fine right i can touch these have no problem whatsoever these are i suppose like resin style but they're not clear resin you know um or no they're not resin are they sorry they're um uh polymer clay i would say these are i absolutely love them she had some really beautiful designs there so yeah they're actually going to be going on a future make and i've got some fabric to match kind of up with this um so yeah it, this is just my story about the button situation but i think i have got better as i've got older because i think once upon a time i would not have even dreamt of touching any buttons whatsoever but now i've got better at cert handling certain ones Okay, so Harry is now in his Scouts uniform because he's gone up to Scouts from Cubs and that is actually a shirt and sewing the badges on there. Sometimes I have to put like those rubber things on my fingers so I don't touch the buttons because they are the worst. Shirt buttons are the worst for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. Then next I went to the Sewing Sanctuary stand and I bought from there a pattern which is the mini cross bag pattern. And it's sort of uh, one that you wear, you know, across your body. And it's a style that I wear quite regularly. So I really like that. And the Sewing Sanctuary, they actually design their own fabrics. And they have them in different formats of, um, you know, base cloths of uh, fabric. And they have some laminated fabric. So like waterproof style or shower proof style. And I picked up this um, large fat quarter. I would say this is quite a large fat quarter. Um, in this beautiful navy and like meadowy kind of style fabric um, and you can press that just using a pressing cloth on the res reverse of the fabric to get the creases out but I picked up that to actually make this cross body bag um, this is just the pattern so it doesn't come as a kit with um, all the bits that you need although I do think you can purchase it like that but I wanted this specific fabric to make mine up in so I will need to get myself some webbing a zip and then the um, other little bits that may be needed for it and um, I think it's like the 
the closures. I think I've actually got some of those. You know those magnetic closures that you put on the inside of the bag? I've got some of those actually. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to have a go at sewing that up. I think it, sometimes it's quite nice to make things other than garments all the time. Um, so I'm gonna have a go at doing that at some point during the spring summer time. I think that'd be great to have ready for holiday. So hopefully I can do that for then. Um, and then whilst I was looking around the fabric stalls, I didn't really have a need for any fabric, but I saw this on Roy's, uh, Roy's Fabrics, Roy's, what is he? Is he just Roy's material? I can't remember now. I'll put it across the bottom of the screen. Um, but he's based in Leicester, funnily enough. Um, and I bought this off his uh, stall. It's this gorgeous, um, I think it's like a cotton poplin, but it's got a little bit of um, like texture to it. So I'll bring it in so you can see. Um, the colours, I was thinking these are perhaps a little bit muted for me. Uh, now I've had my colours done, but I think it's got some of the orange in there and the blue, which is my colourway. So I think it will be fine. And this is the buttons that I bought to go with it. So I thought that would complement it really nicely. Um, and I'm actually going to make this into a shirt dress pattern that I actually bought from the sewing sanctuary themselves when I went to um, the Sewing for Pleasure show a couple of years ago, and I still haven't made it. You know, that happens with a lot of patterns that I buy, but um, yeah, I'm hoping to do that. It, I, can't, I think it's a sunshine dress, it's called. Um, I think it's called that. If I can find a stock photo of it, I'll insert it here. Apologies if not. But yeah, and it's got actually this border print on the bottom here, which I'm actually going to incorporate into the cuffs of the actual dress itself um, and perhaps onto the bottom as well. So yeah, I really, really like that. And I thought those buttons went really well with it. So that is what I got from the Sewing for Pleasure show. So I think I did fairly well there. Um, not too overboard, but yeah, just the right amount. And then whilst I went to the Stitch Festival, my mum and dad came with me again, which was really lovely. Um, my mum and dad love coming along with me to that. And my dad, bless him, drove us there. So it takes us about two and a bit hours to get to London. And we parked in the car park, which is right next to the Business Design Centre itself. Um, I actually prefer the Stitch Festival over the Sewing for Pleasure show, just because they've got a little bit more variety of the type of stalls that are there. So there's a lot more ones that sell, you know, not only fabrics, but haberdashery, buttons, um, cross stitching kits, you know, a, a variety of things. And I do like the way it's laid out. It's a, it's a little bit smaller and there's just more on offer. Um, although I don't think it's really set up for anybody who has disabilities, unfortunately, because it is over a few floors and access, I think you would find that quite difficult. And if you were somebody who needed to have um, a mobility scooter, especially if you went on the Saturday where it's really, really busy, I don't think you'd get round. Um, yeah, that's just in my opinion, but I do like that show personally for me, um, just because of what is on offer there and all the businesses that are there as well. I think it's great. So on that day, I'm sure you've heard from other vloggers who have shared their trip. Um, there were so many of us there from like the sewing community, from Instagram, from YouTube, you know, just from sewing socials and stuff like that. So it was really great to meet up with so many wonderful other sewers um, and we had a real good laugh and it was just such a lovely day so like I say I didn't really skim the surface of the actual show itself I was fortunate enough to go on to the catwalk I absolutely loved it um, I felt a little bit more confident doing it this time because I've done it a few more times in the past. And so I showcased my dress that I wore for Christmas Day, which was the So Different um, Triple Tuck Smock Dress. I absolutely love that pattern. Um, so it was lovely to get a big whoop from the audience as well because a lot of the sewing vloggers were sat there watching. So that was really, really lovely. And I'm not going to reel off everybody I met because I know that there are too many to mention and I don't want to miss anybody out. Um, but yeah, it was so lovely to catch up with old friends and new friends. And for anybody who came and said hello, it was just so lovely. I really really did enjoy it um so it was a really lovely day i was just there for the day um we left at five o'clock because that was when our car park was up so we got back home you know within good time to kind of um, say good night to the boys when i got back so it was that was it was just such a lovely day so i didn't really buy all that much um <laughs> you know but hey ho never mind i think next year i will try my hardest to get there for two days so i will have time to socialize as well as get around the stalls a little bit more and to buy some um lovely sewing goodies. So the first thing that I bought was actually some sewing labels from Little Rosy Cheeks. And these just say, I made this. Um, and then she gave me a little one for free as well, which was this lovely one. I absolutely love that. Um, 
And then I went and visited the lovely Ethel and Jones store and I purchased some buttons. So again, these are okay, these resin buttons. I absolutely love these and I love the colours in these. These are right up my street, these colours. I think they're just, um, yeah, beautiful. I don't have any plans as to what I'm going to pop them on at the moment, but I think I'm, I'm sure I will find a use for them. Um, and then whilst I was at the Ethel and Joan stall, I saw this beautiful necklace. Um, and so I got this as well. It's just so lovely. It's a resin uh, disc with lovely sort of confetti colours inside it and I thought that was absolutely beautiful. It was on a really long chain and I've actually got quite a short neck um, so I've used a chain that I've already got which was a lot shorter so it kind of when I wear it it sits here um, because when I put it on with the other chain it was right down into my cleavage oh, and I couldn't be having that so yeah it was a little bit long um, but I absolutely love that and I've been wearing it with my um, my jumpsuit that I've recently made, <laughs> the uh, Zadie jumpsuit. Um, and I think that looks really, really nice together. So yeah, that was uh, one that I got from there. And then my last purchase, would you believe, was some fabric. And this is from Tanya, who is Bornella Fabrics. And it was really lovely to meet her um, as I've had numerous conversations with her on Instagram. Oh, and I bought this. <laughs> this is just absolutely beautiful. It's a cotton poplin, but it's a really nice, um, sort of soft and lightweight cotton poplin and the colours in this are just absolutely striking. She had this in two other colourways and I know that these fabrics were really really popular because they are very new to her um, business and she designed these herself I believe um, and are oh, just absolutely gorgeous. I bought one and a half metres and I think I am actually going to turn this into the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel um, as a top and I'm hoping that I can perhaps do that by the end of this month so that I can enter it into the Sew April blouse, blouse challenge, which is being run um, throughout the month of April by the Cloth Edit and the Yorkshire Sew Girl. Um, so I don't know if that would be classed as a blouse though. Not sure. Let me know your thoughts on that. Would that Mabel top be classed as a blouse? I know that there are some parameters around what is classed as a blouse that they did, I think, a blog post about. I'll have to check that out. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. But oh, these, these colours, obviously, they are my colours and they are just so me. Absolutely love that. I probably will end up buying some more of that in the future if she continues to have that printed um, because oh, it's just it just makes me smile. It makes me happy. I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, so I think that is basically everything that I got from the shows um, to share with you. Um, moving forwards, um, I have been making, I tried to make a second toile for my auntie for um, the jacket that I'm making for her. And I found a different pattern to use. Um, and I thought it was going to be a bit more of an easier sew. Plus it was an unlined style and it had all the features that she wanted. Um, and I thought it'd be nice for it to be unlined because the fabric that I'm using does have a reverse side to the fabric. But unfortunately, it was a big four pattern, you know, and I have used big four patterns obviously before, it's fine. Um, but I really came up a cropper with the collar and so much so that it was just too much work um, and the actual instructions were dire and uh, it was just making a bit of a hash of the actual jacket itself. And this fabric that I am gonna end up using as the final version, it frays so badly that I just don't think it can be overhandled. So I'm now actually putting that aside. Um, it took me all of like my sewing session to mess about with that collar and, and I, it was just defeat it's defeated me basically so i am going to revert back to the original pattern that we both agreed on initially anyway and i am going to cut out another two sizes and i'm going to send the three sizes off to her and so she can try them on and then we can go with the best size out of those three basically um yeah so this this is taking me a little bit longer than planned but i have had things kind of jump ahead of the queue because i had to get things done for that wedding that i attended as well um but also i want to make sure that it's right at the end of the day so I don't want to rush it so yeah I know she's she wanted it for spring but maybe next spring <laughs> sorry Vivian. um no it, I'll get it done I will get it done so yeah that is kind of on my priority list now moving forwards um and I'd like to do that blouse really but other than that I've got a few other things that I want to get sewing my mate nine I haven't really got into as yet but I will hopefully get that done over the sort of summer months because they are more summery kind of clothes I do prefer sewing in the summer I have the lighter evenings to be able to sew here um, and I do, um, yeah, just enjoy sewing more summery things, really. Um, I am in the process of having a massive clear out. So I am getting rid of some clothes that I no longer wear. 
Um, I did take some down to my sewing group, but nobody really <laughs> wanted any of them. Um, and I think I'm gonna either sell some on Vinted perhaps, or I might just give them away to charity. Um, yeah, just get rid of stuff to make a bit more space for future makes and also just to be realistic about what I am actually wearing. Um, some of them are pattern tests um, and some I made that are just really old that I'm getting rid of. The, some of them are my very early makes when I didn't even have an overlocker, so they aren't even finished very well. I need to do the same with my summer clothes because they're all packed away still at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be creating a little bit more space anyway. So I'm quite enjoying that process. It feels quite good to get rid of things. I do have some old work items that I'm still hanging on to that realistically I don't think I'm gonna fit into for one. And secondly, you know, I've had them for such a long time, I don't think they'll be in style by the time I return back to work. And actually touching on that subject, um, I am now in the process of actively looking for a part-time position to fit in with within school hours so I can still pick up the boys and take them to school. Um, but yeah, our situation has kind of changed, whereas that's come around a little bit quicker than we were initially planning. Um, so I am, yeah, in the process of looking for something. But I am thinking about um, starting to do memory bears um, just locally, because I don't feel like I would trust sending anybody's uh, precious loved one's garments that have been made into a bear through the post. So I think I'm just gonna advertise that locally, just as a little sort of um, side hustle to do. Uh, yeah, uh, whilst I look for a position that is gonna potentially be right for us as a family. So anyway, I think that basically brings this video to an end. So thank you so much if you have stuck with me all through this, because it's been quite a long one. I've really enjoyed chatting to you today. So if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. It is free, so it'd be lovely to have you on board with the YouTube family. Um, and also give this video a like if you have enjoyed it. And I love chatting to you in, in the comments, so please do that as well, that would be lovely. And I shall hopefully check in with you again very soon. Um, but for now, I shall see you again. Take care, bye.